What is going on, you guys? 821 Mayo here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys five insanely strong Mew Jammers on five different maps. Without wasting any more time, let's jump into the video. So the very first Mew Jammer that you want to find is going to be on the map Chalet, and for this one, you're going to want to walk into Connector, vault up on top of the boxes, and then walk to your left. You will then get a second vault prompt to vault further on top of the boxes, and then here, this is where you will place your Mew Jammer for the Connector Hatch. And as you can see, this Mew Jammer covers roughly half of the hatch, which I know isn't all that great, but if Kate is ever banned, this Mew Jammer is a great substitute for this hatch. Now the next Mew Jammer I want to talk about is going to be in the office room when you guys go office master. So with this Mew Jammer, it's strong because not only can it not be shot from big one to repel, but you force the attackers to either go below or swing the canine door or swing the canine door in order to get this one. But this Mew Jammer will cover most of the reinforcement on the right side in office, and it will cover roughly half of the piano door. Now when playing Mute, it's important that you guys keep in mind that it's not always just about denying drones or utility, it's also about funneling drones into lines of sight or areas of the map where you can predict them and make them very easy to shoot. So it's not always just about denying a single doorway or window, it's also about denying or funneling the drones into areas of the map where you can pretty much predict them every single time and shoot them very easily. So with this Mew Jammer here in office, I know that the drones can only come from roughly this side of the doorway, and they either have to go all the way around to the left, or they have to come through the right into piano, so it makes them very easy to see and predict. Now the next Mew Jammer I want to talk about is also going to be on the top floor of Chalet, and that's going to be the one in the bathtub for Piano Window. So if you combine this Mew Jammer with some other ones like maybe in Solar or in Piano and the Office one as well, it becomes a living hell for the attackers because they have to find ways and routes to take their drones to the map. But with this Mew Jammer here, it covers all of the window jump in. And also as the attacker, you cannot shoot it from the outside because not only are you de-elevated, but also there's this little lip of the actual bathtub itself. So it makes it extremely hard to see this. All right, and now the last and final Mew Jammer I want to talk about on the map chalet is going to be the one for the split doorway leading from trophy into the dining hall. So with this one, you want to try to go to the far left of the hood of the car in Big Garage. And with this one, you just want to go to the left, hold down your mouse one or gadget placement button, and then straight to the right. And then it will automatically put the Mew Jammer all the way to the left side as far as it can go. And with this one, it's important that you try to keep it a little bit further back on the hood, more to the right if you're looking at it from this direction. So that way you can cover both of the split doors leading from Trophy. So as you can see this Mew Jammer downstairs in the basement, if you guys ever do go dining and kitchen, this is an extremely strong Mew Jammer because you force the attackers to either go below, shoot it, or avoid this whole area of the map and try to find other ways to drive their drones into this area. But it covers the left split door and then maybe a little bit of the right split door is left untouched. That's why it's really important that you place this Mew Jammer very specifically because you may miss a large portion of the split door, but for the most part, they're not going to know where it's at. They're just going to drive their drone straight in and then it'll get Mew Jammed. But that's everything for the map chalet. Now let's move on to coastline. Before we carry on with the video, I want to mention a few things. So firstly, don't forget that you can pick up the DG weapon skin for the LED5 for Thatcher and Sledge by going to the shop tab, scrolling down to the bottom, and clicking the eSports button. I also want to mention that you guys can subscribe to the DG channel for as little as 99 cents a month for a tier membership. You guys have access to exclusive emotes, exclusive sub badges, as well as two high quality Rainbow Six Siege backgrounds each month. Now with all of that being said, let's carry on with the video. So the first Mute Jammer I want to cover on Coastline is going to be for the Hookah Door from below. So if you walk into Sunrise, destroy this little glass here with a drink, walk to the corner of the Sunrise Bar, try your hardest to put it as close to the corner as you can, you know, walk up to it, hold down your mouse one button and then strafe backwards and it will automatically place it as far into the corner as it can. But once we go upstairs, you can see that this Mute Jammer from below covers most of the hookah door, so you force the attackers to either throw their drones through the hookah window or not drone this area of the map at all, or go below to get rid of the Mew Jammer. But yes, this Mew Jammer below in Sunrise on the bar is extremely effective for the hookah billards bomb site. Now this next Mew Jammer I want to talk about will mostly apply to the kitchen service bomb site or even maybe blue bar Sunrise. But this one covers the top of Cool Vibes from Harry Potter on the little plant box here on bottom Cool Vibes stairs. So if I go upstairs, as you can see, once I hit the top, 
it covers this entire area which again forces the attackers to either jump their drone over this little ledge which makes which makes their drones very predictable in their positioning and it either forces them to shoot open this wall here to drive their drones down or if you reinforce the wall off from inside of hookah they won't have that option which will again you know force them to jump over the little vase down cool vibes now talking about the billard's hookah bomb site again this is also another very effective mute jammer for this bomb site upstairs so as you can see it's on the left corner of the blue bar bar itself and then once we go upstairs here in billards as you can see by the mute icon in the bottom left i am being mute jammed here and this is a really strong mute jammer because not only is planting default spot here very common but also again keep in mind guys it forces the attackers drones to either go to the left side of the pool table or on top of it so if you combine this mute jammer here in blue bar with the one in sunrise as well these two mute jammers pretty much sandwich the map here from below with their mute jamming capabilities for the upstairs bomb sites okay and so for the next mute jammer it's going to be mute jamming luggage entrance from top white from below so if you go into security locate this desk put the mute jammer on there Th there's different ways that you can put this one down so if you want to put it more to the top right corner there that'll cover more of this area but if you put it closer to the left side and to the top of the desk it will cover most of the white door as i come over here so you can slip past this mute jammer as you can see there's no mute jammer icon in the bottom left of my screen currently so if the attackers know about this mute jammer placement they will most likely be able to just you know hit the gap here and then drive their drone into aqua from luggage so kind of play around with this one here a little bit there's different places you can put it for different mute jamming capabilities upstairs and luggage okay and the fifth and last mute jammer i want to talk about is going to be for the aqua bar and some of the double door leading into billards so with this one if you locate the office room on coastline go over here vault up on top of the desk place a mute jammer here as you can see this mute jammer from below is muting off some of aqua here and closer to the double door as well and there's the mute jammer here as i'm standing right above it but if you couple this one with the other one in blue bar that i just showed a moment ago these two make an extremely strong team with muting off this whole area of the map so those are the five mute jammers on coastline now let's move on to oregon so now that we're on oregon i want to talk about our first mute jammer which is going to be in laundry for the lobby hatch now this one is a pretty well known mute jammer but still a very good one for the people who don't know about it here on the dg youtube channel so with this one it covers mostly all of the hatch i believe this little corner here so a very small portion of this corner of the hatch is not mute jammed and i used to run this mute jammer in my old team when i used to play comp but this is an extremely strong one because you force the attackers to either walk down the stairs or get a maverick or something rotate him over here open the hatch and then you know shoot that mute jammer that is located on the laundry machine now the next mute jammer i want to talk about is also going to be in the basement so if you locate freezer find this box vault up on top of it place your mute jammer here this one will cover the left side of split into meeting so once i walk in the left split here as you can see the blue mute jammer icon shows up in the bottom left of my screen and it show and it covers all of this area of the left side of split so it makes it extremely hard if you guys are holding meeting and reinforcing off these walls it makes it extremely difficult for the attackers to try to drone this area of the map if they want to drive their drone from lobby into split they have to go to the right which makes it extremely strong for the people playing meeting to just kind of look at this area periodically shoot the drones that come through now let's talk about our third mute jammer on oregon so this one is going to cover the attic wall to trophy which is an extremely important wall for the attackers in order for them to take attic control if they want to apply pressure from both sides from trophy wall as well as attic wall from t2 they're going to need to open this wall here so if you place a mute jammer right where i'm looking this will not only cover this entire wall which is the most important wall when it comes to trophy you might then force them to open the left wall which isn't as impactful as the right one is and this mute jammer also covers a portion of the trophy door leading into the bomb site itself so if there's any drones or iana clones trying to walk into the bomb site they're going to have to deal with this mute jammer first that is an attic now another very strong mute jammer coupled with the one that i just went over there is the one in trophy for the top main stairs right next to this little couch sofa so if you place it here not only is it concealed from the master door the attackers can shoot it from the master door as they can shoot through the little couch here and they can destroy this mute jammer if they know where it's placed but if they don't then it's extremely strong and if no attackers are coming from master and they want to come from top main to shoot it they're going to have to cross the door and as you guys know there's 
there's this angle from kids door as well as you know attic swing so if they want to cross the door they're gonna to have to deal with these angles here and maybe the shield that's commonly placed in that location now the last new gem i want to talk about is a little bit of a run away from the bomb sites but is going to be on these little two by four planks in t1 on big tower so if you come over here, place a Mew Jammer on the planks, go up to T2, and come to a very common window repel where the attackers come in through from. As you can see from the bottom left, this Mew Jammer covers this entire window jump in. So if they throw a drone through this window, there's a high likelihood that it will be muted, and it will take longer for the attackers to take big tower control for the attic wall if that's what they're wanting to do. But those are the five Mew Jammers on Oregon. Now let's move on to Consulate. So now that we're on console, let's talk about our very first mute jammer, which is going to be in cafe for the anti-chamber double door leading from lobby. So if you come into cafe, place your mute jammer on this little med metal box in between these two tables. As you can see with me standing in the anti-chamber double door, this covers most of this door here. So the next one I want to talk about is also a fairly known mute jammer spot, but for the people who don't know it, it's extremely strong. So if you come into security from cafe, shoot out these TVs with your shotgun while playing mute, vault up on top of the desk, and then destroy this fan here on this little filing cabinet, walk on top of the filing cabinet and place your mute jammer. This is going to cover the jungle door or statue door leading into lobby. And from the mute jammer in the bottom left of the screen, this covers the entire doorway leading from jungle into circle desk. Now the third mute jammer I want to talk about is going to tie into the first two that I went over. So if you do all three of these mute jammers together, it makes the attacker's jobs much, much harder of trying to take above control. So the third one is going to be on the metal box and pipes. If you come over here, try your hardest not to destroy the little cardboard boxes here that are on the metal box itself so that way when they open the wall they don't have a direct line of sight on it if we go upstairs to the yellow door leading into piano as you can see by the mute jammer here you cannot drone anything near this doorway you can't even get a portion of yellow control with your drones just because of this mute jammer there so it's very important that you don't destroy the little cardboard boxes here on the actual metal box itself. As you can see, it kind of conceals it in a way. So if the attackers don't know exactly where it's at, they won't be able to see it and shoot it. Moving on to our fourth new jammer, it's going to be in the meeting bomb site when you guys do go upstairs. And with this one here, it's going to be placed in this area called Bosco or Pangu. This is commonly where a smoke player will play with a shield here. So that's why this area is called that. But nonetheless, this Mew Jammer will cover this wall here, which is an extremely important wall for the attackers if they do want to take admin over, getting this wall open, and clearing this player out of this position is extremely important for the attackers to do. And if you can deny that or stall them from doing it, it will help your team out quite a bit. So not only does it deny the actual wall itself, but it also mutes their drones if they do want to go inner long desk, as you can see by the blue Mute Jammer popping up in the bottom left of my screen. So it forces their drones to the to go to the right side of the long desk. And keep in mind, again, it's not always about denying 100% of an area. It's also about forcing or funneling their drones and utility through a section of the map. So it makes it much easier for you to predict and shoot as the defenders. And our last mute jammer is going to be in coffin behind the desk in this room. And this one covers most of the visa stair walk up. As you can see, if I go on the far left, it doesn't cover that. But if I go in the middle or towards the more left-hand side of the stairs, it does cover any drones trying to drive up the staircase. And it also does cover 100% of the coffin door leading to top visa and meeting. So if the attackers are taking from admin over, they're going to have to force themselves to come over and shoot this new jammer or twitch drone it or EMP it, whatever method they choose to use. But in order for them to drive their drone through this doorway, they're going to have to get rid of this Mute Jammer. So now that we've gone over all five Mute Jammers on four maps, let's move on to our last map, Clubhouse. So the very first Mute Jammer I want to go over is going to be for the single construction wall. And if you place the Mute Jammer in Logi here, you can cover roughly half of the wall here. So if there's a Habana or an Ace, they're going to be forced to open the right side of the wall, which makes it much more predictable in their positioning. You, know, you don't have to pre-aim the entire wall. You mostly have to pre-aim the far right side. The reason this new jammer is also really strong is because any one connector window will not be able to shoot it. So as you can see here, as long as you place the new jammer properly, you will not be able to shoot the new jammer itself. Now the next two new jammers I'm going to go over are going to be for the CCTV cache bombs light when you guys are playing defense. And with these two, it's going to create a sandwich effect 
on the cash wall leading into construction. So as you can see, I placed my first one there. And then if I come over here, place my second one right here. This will not only deny any attackers from going below and trying to impact it with Sophia or opening the floor with Ash, because they're not going to know exactly where the Mew Jammers are. And also if you couple this Mew Jammer with an ADS here, it will deny the attackers trying to nade the, this Mew Jammer out. But this covers 100% of the cash wall leading into construction. And also it covers a tiny bit of the door when they do drive their drone into the bomb site. And the next new jammer I want to go over is going to be for the mini stairs leading into garage or lounge. Now the reason this new jammer is, is so strong is because when the attackers want to drone garage, and you know if you guys are in the basement bomb site Arsenal Church, if they want to drone garage, they're going to have to walk in all the way and shoot this new jammer and extend their positioning. And this might lead you to playing lounge here, and since they haven't droned you yet, you might be able to swing someone that's trying to come over here and shoot the new jammer. And also, if they do eventually get rid of this mute jammer or just avoid it, you can just sit here and lounge and, you know, w watch this drone hole here because this, this is the only other exit from garage into lounge with their drones. So again, guys, it's not always just about denying 100% of a area of a map. It's also about forcing the attackers and their drones into areas of the map where it makes it easy for you to just pre-aim and shoot the drones that come through. Now, the second to last mute jammer I want to talk about is going to be for the church bomb site itself. So if you place this new jammer here, it will not only cover the far right panel reinforcement, but also if any attackers want to drive their drones through the hallway, it's going to cover roughly half of the hallway itself. So you're hitting two birds with one stone, you're getting the reinforcement, as well as, you know, some of the hallway here. Now the last new jammer I want to talk about is going to be the one to the far left side of the motor door. It's very important that you place it on the left side of this pillar or column on the motor door itself, because as an attacker, if you walk in here, you will not be able to see or shoot this mute jammer, so it makes it extremely difficult for them to get any info inside of the church bomb site. And also, as you can see, there's a rough portion of this door frame that the mute jammer does not cover. But again, you know, the attackers more or less need to know about this exact mute jammer and its weaknesses in order to capitalize on the fact that a portion of the door itself is not mute jammed. But those are going to be my five mute jammers for five different maps in Rainbow Six Siege. If you guys enjoyed or learned anything new from this video, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe to the Disrupt Gaming YouTube channel. I also want to mention before I go that you guys can get exclusive sub badges as well as exclusive emotes and two high quality Rainbow Six Siege backgrounds each month by becoming a member here on the DG YouTube channel for as little as 99 cents a month. And I also want to mention that you guys can pick up the L85 A2 Disrupt Gaming Weapon Skin for Thatcher and Sledge by going to the shop tab, scrolling down to the bottom and clicking the esports button. But with all of that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new and I will see you guys in the next video.